Joining me now from the UK is Francesco Rizzuto. He is the Dean and Head of the School of Law at Liverpool Hope University. Francesco, good to have you on the program with us. Talk to us about the process of joining NATO. What can we expect in terms of the next steps now that Finland has formally announced it plans to apply to join? Well, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Well, yes, Finland uh, very shortly, probably to be followed by Sweden. They will submit their application. And uh, then the, the other members, the, the other 28 members, uh, I believe, will have to formally accept. But of course, the process itself implies that, that the national parliaments uh, or national constitutional procedures in each of these states will also have to ratify uh, the expansion. So it's not going to happen overnight, despite the fact that the German foreign minister says that they'll fast track this. Uh, it, it, if you like, the intention is there. And once uh, matters are clarified with Turkey, uh, uh, then then I would have thought that they would be members in, in the next 10 to 12 months, full members. But of course, they will have the security guarantees before they are formally signed up to the uh, the organization. Okay, and actually, that was what I, exactly what I wanted to ask you next. What happens in the interim between Finland and Sweden's application and then acceptance? And what responsi responsibility does NATO have to these countries if Russia, in that interim period, were to retaliate? Look, let's move away from the world of uh, headlines and strap lines. The reality is, of course, that Sweden and Finland are members of the European Union. Within the treaty... Uh, at Article 42, uh, Clause 7, there is, if you like, a mutual assistance pact that if any, any member state is actually attacked, the victim of an aggression, the other states must go to support it. So to an extent, uh, those two countries, once they've declared that they're no longer neutral and it's up to them to do that, they don't have to join NATO to stop being neutral. They will simply, if they were attacked, let us say, they would simply request, on the basis of Article 47, uh, 42, 7, assistance from France, uh, Italy, Germany, and so on. So, in a sense, they do have that security um, assurance even before they become formal members. And I think it's important that people do not lose sight of this. NATO gives them added security, if you like, because it may result in American soldiers assisting them if necessary, or the American nuclear umbrella assisting them, though that will cause other kinds of problems. Uh, but, but in the interim, if you like, these states, Finland and Sweden, are protected, if you like, by the rest of the European Union, or certainly most of the rest of the European Union, one would probably exclude uh, Hungary uh, in, in that equation. So this idea that somehow until then they're out on, in the cold and nobody will help them is, is frankly both politically and legally incorrect. Okay, we'll leave it there for now then. Francesco Rizzuto joining us um, from the UK. Thank you.